Today I shot this and I had I just wanted to give it a try because I thought this was a real good scenario why I would personally use the dual fisheye plug-in over the regular Theta app. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this. So this is a, obviously kind of an extreme example and it's actually an example of when I find the dual fisheye plug-in most useful. It's when you're in a kind of a darker room and especially when there's some brighter lights. So like when you have a high contrast area, in this case, we're in this living room, uh, no lights to speak of inside except for these two lamps and all this natural light coming in. It's kind of an overcast day, so the, the it was pretty bright out. And you can see there's not much detail in the highlights. I wanted to try and expose it as properly as I could, but I know from experience that the Rico files don't handle very well in the shadows, right? So a lot of noise starts to get introduced when you start to push those a little bit. So just for fun, I'll just hit auto really quick and see what it does for us. And I usually just start with auto on these because, you know, you just I kind of just want to see what it does. And then I can kind of start adjusting things from here. I can try to bring in the highlights a little bit, um, you know, bring in the the shadows a bit and you can see it's actually quite noisy and um, this is one of the reasons I don't use the Rico app as much as I could okay I, I I'm being careful with how I word that because I've kind of changed recently how I'm handling this now this is pretty much as far as I could push it it's not a bad image but it is a little noisy you can't really recover the shadow detail without introducing too much noise um, even in the mid-tones, there's still quite a bit of noise, as you can see. Um, and you can, really can't recover the highlights all that much, okay? So here com in comes the dual fisheye plug-in image. So this was, um, I believe I set this at plus two, plus minus two. So this was either three or five different exposures. I can't remember. Either way, let's just say it was five exposures just for the fun of it. Um, if I just hit auto on this just to see where it brings us, you can, and I'm, I'm going to make some more adjustments, but just out of the bat, you can see significantly less noise in the shadows and in the mid tones. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty significant difference when you compare it to the, um, the, the native Z1, uh, app. So, uh, another thing you'll notice is the color. The color is actually more accurate. This has more of a green hue to it. Um, that's not how it was on location. This is significantly more accurate. It was a little warmer in the room, uh, mostly due to these lights and a mixture of this. So it, I think it handles the color better. Granted, it's raw, so you can, or DNG rather, you can you can still adjust the, the white balance, but more or less, I, I like this better. So um, we another thing is you can kind of push the highlights a little bit more than you can with their, now we, we can't 100% recover unless I did like maybe a nine stop or a seven stop uh, exposure, but I didn't. But when you compare the highlight recovery to the native app, it's pretty significant. Um, in fact, I'll just do this extreme just so we can see. You can just recover a lot more detail. I, again, I probably could have recovered more had I done more stops, but I didn't. Uh, but for the most part, I think this just the the you know, the dual fisheye provides just a cleaner image, uh, less noise, better color, more dynamic range um, than the native. So that is my real world example. Granted, it's a little more extreme and I'm, I'm honestly not going to use the dual fisheye um, plug in for every single real estate shoot, only when it makes sense. Um, and honestly, it's actually a little bit faster. There's not as much fumbling around once you set it. Um, it just, it takes a workflow, you know what I mean? The, the most challenging part of using dual fisheye is when you bring it in a Lightroom, there's just a certain process you have to follow. You can watch the video uh, that I put in the corner up here um, if you want to or on this end screen. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions on this. Again, I'm not a 360 expert or a virtual tour expert. I just, I'm, do, I'm messing with this for now, but Rich wanted to see an example, and I thought I'd make this example uh, just for him and for anybody else who was interested. So let me know if you have any questions on this. I'll do my best to answer.